Hi guys, Zane here, and today I'm going to be doing Bookshelf 1, Shelf 1, a bookshelf tour. So, you may have seen before, I did like an overall bookshelf tour, which I'll link to below, where you can see kind of... It's more so you can see the scale of my collection, I guess. Now what I want to do is to do some more in-depth ones. I know a couple of people said they'd be up for this. So basically, we're just going to do a series of videos where we go shelf at a time through my bookshelves. I'm also going to make a playlist so that you can catch up in the playlist as well. So yeah, by the way, this is kind of inspired by both Richardson Reads and Steve Donahue because I know both of those have done bookshelf tours as well and I really enjoy watching them, so I wanted to do my own. And um, I thought I'd give a little nod to Todd the Librarian, so just bear with me. Mm. Warm. I think I've piled these in such a way that I can do it in alphabetical order still. And I don't know how many books there are on this shelf. I'm going to list all that information in the final video. And all the titles of these books will be there as well. So we're going to start with this one. Now, bear in mind, I go alphabetically by author surname. Sometimes I have problems. I don't know what to do in the cases of ones like this where it's Aaron, Cassidy, and Martin. I don't actually know their first names. But Aaron comes first alphabetically. And this is Star Wars 001. And it's a Loot Crate exclusive comic that my girlfriend got because she used to subscribe to loot crates i've um never had loot crates i have recently had some subscription boxes i actually gave this five out of five i just thought it was great i mean the artwork obviously you've got you got your han and your luke and your whatnots there and um what's what i liked about this is that it's a spin on the original star wars story and what it respects the original Star Wars, but equally tells a new story as well, which I thought was really cool. So yeah, check that out. And we have one I'm not going to dwell on for long. This is uh, Carolyn Abram, Facebook for Dummies. And I, I read this years ago when I was getting into social media marketing. It was kind of outdated then, and I'm sure it's even more outdated now. This is the fourth edition. I mean... <sighs> Why would you need this? <laughs> I don't know. There are a lot of random books on this. Okay, so we've got two by the same author here. And this is Tracy Avery. So this is Blue Sun and Dark Waters. And these are books one and two. These are indie books. And I will read you the blurb of book one, or part of it. So, uh, the fate of thousands rests in the hands of one young girl. A mysterious secluded island with secrets. A brilliant teenage girl whose rising curiosity leads her to probe too deeply. A detached father who goes missing. Stalkers at every turn marked with a disturbing tattoo, an unreachable castle that holds all the answers. And this is all set on the Isle of Man, which is over here in the UK. It's in the uh, Irish Sea. It's really interesting, actually. It's not a bad little, little indie series. I don't know if any more books are out yet. What's weird is that the book one ended in such a way that you cannot really say anything about book two without talking about book one. And um, it was really interesting what she did with it, actually. I really enjoyed it. Okay, then we have here... Twitterature, Penguin Books, the world's greatest books retold through Twitter. And this is by Alexander Asaman and Emmett Renson. And basically it is like a series of tweets that tell a classic over. So let's see, what's, let me find one that I've read. All right, The Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. 40 days since I've caught a fish and the boy brings me the paper. We talk about baseball. I love DiMaggio. I am a strange old man. Perhaps I will grow a beard. I may have caught the big one. It is pulling hard. The coast is far away. Maybe home late. Still being pulled. Still being pulled. The fish is a noble fish, but I believe I have got him. So yeah, that's the kind of thing you get in this. I mean, it's not great to be honest. It's fine. It's a bit a bit gimmicky, but whatever's. Then we have this bind up thing that I have of Douglas Adams, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So this has got Hitchhiker's Guide, Restaurant at the End of the Universe, Life, the Universe and Everything, and So Long and Thanks for All the Fish in it. Um, I should point out as well, all of these books I have read, so you can ask me about them and we, we can chat. We have Chimanda Ngozi Adichie, We Should All Be Feminists. So I actually picked this up in Liverpool. I thought this was good, but she... Um, it was too anecdotal. I would have liked to have seen more actual, like, you know, stats-based arguments rather than... I, I get it does make you empathise with it when she says, you know, I have a friend who this happened to. But I think it would be more powerful to say this happens to 20% of women or something, you know. But it was still very good and ve very much worth reading, of course. Transformer Tricks by Patience Ag Barbie. I think this might be signed. 
It is, and I think I might have forgotten this from my signed books collection video that I filmed. This is a poetry collection, and basically she had a connection with my old uni, so she came along and did a, a talk once there, and I picked up her book while I was at it and got it signed, yeah. Linked Workings, this is by Frank Agin and Lewis Howes. Lewis Howes, actually, I think he used to be an American footballer, and he was injured, and he kind of wondered what he was going to do with his career, and then he ended up becoming, like, a professional networker, basically. And this is all about networking on LinkedIn. And yeah, I mean, again, this is kind of a product of its times. These, all of these social media books are from when I first got my job and started working in social media and needed to read books for research. The Beatles, and this is, says, all you ever wanted to know about the Fab Four. This book contains five pieces of cherished memorabilia. Oh yeah, so it's got two A5 color photos, two black and white postcards, and an A4 color poster in there. Those are actually really cool. I might frame those. I think I will frame those. And yeah, there's lots of info on all these people inside, all these people. <laughs> by all these people, I mean the Beatles, by the way, like the beginning Lennon and McCartney. And yeah, I'm just a big Beatles fan. I think this was actually a gift from my mom at some point, probably for Christmas. It's the kind of thing she gets me these books, not realizing that I'm really obsessive about my books, so I then had to read the entire thing, which was kind of dull after a certain extent, but... Written by Kim Aitken. There we go. Then we have some Red Dwarf stuff, and these are all by the same people or person, I believe. These are by, uh, da, 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 written by Paul Alexander. So we have Red Dwarf Log number 1996, which basically, the idea is it's like an annual log, I guess. But for Red Dwarf, the TV show, one of my favourite shows of all time, so there's Rimmer in his little hat. And uh, yeah, I mean, I found this at a car boot sale as well and paid like 50p for it or something. And it's just great for like a Red Dwarf fan like myself. So we also have the Space Corps Survival Manual, Essential Issue, All Ships. And so we have uh, interviews with the choices, you know, things, advice on how to do various different things. This is Arnold Rimmer's Instant Dinner Trap. So yeah, I mean, gimmicky, but super cool. I'm, I'm quite glad I have these in my collection. Then we have Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli, which I'm not going to say a huge deal about because I recently reviewed it on the channel, but yeah, check out the review of that if you want to know what I thought of that. I read that as a buddy read as well with a few people. And we have The Everyday Poet, edited by Deborah Ulmer, and um, this is just a beautiful little hardback poetry collection. And um, I actually won this in a giveaway on Twitter for National Poetry Day, so the competition was, you know, tweeters your performance of one of your poems at, or tweet as one of your poems and you could win a book so I tweet them sort of some of my stand-up poetry and they sent me like 15 books and this was one of them and it's lovely this I think I, I gave this a four out of five as well Shahab M Altaf we have only future to win and uh... <laughs> okay so this is by Austin McCauley and they're basically a vanity press in disguise. They wanted to publish one of my books if I paid them two grand, which was nice of them. So I said no, but basically they charge people to publish their books. They do a pretty good job of putting them out, but it is still a vanity press, you know. And the blurb on the back, what is this? It says, I hope this book will be a welcome addition to the list of books already published and will sensitize the readers to pause, ponder, think and act to make this world a better place. Uh, it's poetry. Okay, I don't remember this book at all, but yeah. Still read it, so whatever. Then we have Kingsley Amos, The Old Devils. This is the winner of the 1986 Booker Prize. I actually picked this up at random from a charity shop. And then, after, just after I'd read and reviewed it um, on my book blog, this was before I was booktubing, I saw somebody else had read it as well. I think it was Hannah Tay. And um, yeah, it was all right. It wasn't great. It hasn't made me want to read any more Amos. And it was kind of long. And it's all about English gentlemen. We have Kevin J. Anderson, Darksaber. So this is one of the Star Wars Expanded Universe novels, which have since, unfortunately, been declared non-canon uh, since Disney bought the, the, the Star Wars, you know, Star Wars universe, which is a shame because I really like this one. So the, pl the plot here, this is set after the end of Return of the Jedi. Luke returns home with Han Solo, hoping to make contact with Obi-Wan Kenobi. Instead, what they find is disturbing news. The Huts, criminal warlords of the galaxy, are building a secret superweapon, a reconstruction of the original Death Star super laser to be called Darksaber. Sharon E. Anderson, Curse of the 770s. So she's an author friend of mine. We used to both be published by Booktrope. And basically, this is like a paranormal romance, but I really enjoyed it, I must say. I mean, I think you can be, it's easy to be dismissive about paranormal romance, and I think this is probably the only one I read, and I thought it was pretty good, so... And it's about, uh, so what's the lady's name? Cassandra Blake. Her fiancé dumps her, but also convinces her to store his research. 
So she moves into this cottage and she starts going through all of his stuff. And basically she wakes up this vampire called Varro. And uh, yeah, stuff happens between them. Then we have this, which is very, you know, I mean, I don't really keep CDs at all in general. This is called Visual Music by ARCE, I guess. I just broke the CD case. And it's the thoughts of one, feelings of many. And it's literally, although it comes in a CD case, it is a book with this photography and, you know, text over the top of it as well. And it is, it's just really, really cool. This is another one that I got sent a copy of. Then we have Jeffrey Archer, Be Careful What You Wish For. Now, this is the only Jeffrey Archer book that I own. This is another one that I was sent by the publicist. They actually sent me this, along with some teas, a hot water bottle, and uh, something else as well. It, I think it was some vouchers. I think it was some uh, book vouchers. And this was sent to me as part of this thing for a publishing company. And I think, I can't remember what they were called now. It was called something like No Stress Publishing or something. And basically they wanted to send this to a bunch of author bloggers to show them, you know, we do a stressful publishing process. And it was really cool. So I enjoyed it. I mean, I did quite like this. I, I probably will read more Jeffrey Archer at some point. Um, just when I get to it, you know, so much to read, so little time. Okay, then we have Alexander Armstrong and Richard Osman, and this is the 100 most pointless things in the world. So Armstrong and Osman are the host of Pointless, the TV show. And this is just a fun little trivia book. Fun fact, I was actually on Pointless, the TV show. I'll link to it below. It's on my channel. It's one of the first videos on my channel. So I was on national TV. And uh, we got to the end, and spoiler alert, uh, I got a question wrong, and it was a question about uh, writers who've won a Gold Dagger Award. And I've read a few of those writers, and I still got it wrong. All right, and then we have Mobile Marketing for Dummies by Michael Becker and John Arnold. And the same goes. This was when I was first getting into marketing and I thought it'd be a good idea to do some homework. Then we have Zubair, Arshad and Graham Clark, Other Cats to Whip, The Book of French Idioms. So this is all about various things that have been brought into our language from French or various French sayings. So for example, Il n'y a pas de lizard. Literal translation, there's no lizard, meaning not a problem. It comes with these little, you know, the roots of the words and little illustrations with it. I'd forgotten about this book, actually, but it's beautiful, delightful. Definitely one if you like language. Then we have Towards the Horizon by J.R. Ashley. Pfft, what can I say about it? It's a random uh, self-published, I believe. Oh, no, from Book Guild Publishing, which could well still be self-published. But, um... Yeah, a poetry collection by this guy. Don't remember it at all, so I can't tell you anything about it. Sorry. All right, now we're at our Asimov. So I've only read three Asimov books so far. The first we have here, iRobot. It's the movie cover, I know. I'm sorry about that. Um, but actually, iRobot, cracking book. Really nothing like the movie. You should read it. I think that's one of the books. It should be just a classic. Everyone should read it, regardless of whether you're a sci-fi fan or not. It's where we get the laws of robotics from as well. Then I have The End of Eternity, which is another stunning book, actually. It just deals with time and the effects of time and time travel and all of this stuff. It's just very beautifully written. Then we have The Rings of Saturn, which is the fifth novel in the extraterrestrial odyssey of David Starr, who is also known as Lucky Starr. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed that one as well. I just need to read more Asimov. All right, then I have these two. This is issues one and two of Astronaut, which is a literary magazine slash whatever you'd call it, like a zine, I guess, yeah. I don't know if they're still going or not. All right, then we have Life on Earth by David Attenborough. And uh, I mean, this never had the cover or dust jacket as far as I'm aware. I actually, I stole this. <laughs> I, I don't think it counts too much. Basically, we went on this team building day uh, at my old job and we went to this place where they rented this cabin for like three grand for a night or something and while we were there I happened to notice they had these bookcases with various bits on display and I saw this and I pinched it so and it was great it was marvelous definitely worth stealing if you see a copy of it Kristen Aubrey and John Shearlaw Glastonbury an oral history of the music mud and magic and I guess I got this around 2010 when I first went to Glastonbury and uh, yeah, it's just a great little non-fiction book about the festival and all that kind of stuff. The history of it, how it's fitting with politics, the charitable side of it and stuff. So yeah. David B. Epileptic. And this is a graphic novel. And this is just stunning. All the graphic novel, uh, all the design and all the, you know, it's just beautiful. And this is by a French guy. And it's about his little brother had really bad problems with epilepsy. You know, really bad uh, grand mal seizures. And so they went all over France and tried all these different therapies and whatnot. And basically nothing really worked. And this is just sort of a non-fiction graphic novel memoir of that. 
and it's just beautiful even the way that the fits you know the, the that's why it's done in black and white because the fits can be portrayed really hauntingly as monsters and whatnot so it's lovely i have hollywood by don Bacardi, and this is another one that i got sent and i imagine this is probably supremely expensive to buy basically don Bacardi, he was a famed portrait of a uh, uh, pain famed portrait artist yeah anyway i'm just going to try and hold it up and show you it's very heavy but basically it's just a collection of this dude's Various portraits Bruce Davison and on the right that is Joe D'Alessandro So yeah, I mean it's nice it's very unwieldy though. You can't really carry this book around with you David Baddiel the person controller I believe I got sent a copy of this for free when it came out David Baddiel is known here in the UK as TV personality comedian actor, I guess so that's his book. It's for kids. It was fine typical celebrity book for kids really to be honest iPad for dummies by Edward C. Baig and Bob Dr. Mac Levitus. Yeah, again, I think everyone knows how to use an iPad now, so I don't think that one's too relevant to you guys. Terence Bailey, Dead in Time. Uh, a sharp, clever thriller with a paranormal tris, twist. Then we have Adrian Baldwin. We have Barnacle Brat first, which is a dark comedy for grown-ups. Basically, there's a mad clown going around killing people. Then we have Stanley McLeod Must Die, which I actually did for the February book for Dane and Todd's Todd and Dane's Indie Read Along. Todd and Dane's Indie Read Along. My bad. So there's a review of that on my channel if you want to check it out. And I'm also a character in it. Barnacle Brat was also great. I actually got Barnacle Brat as a secret Santa present from the author himself. I think he was cheaping out on it a little bit. But a blogger friend of mine did a, you know, a bookish Secret Santa, and I got his book, so that was pretty cool. Susan Balfour, Stress Control, Stress Busting Strategies for the 21st Century. And uh, again, this is another one that I got sent. I basically accepted it back in the days when I was accepting more random shit, basically. And um, I mean, it's fine if you need to de-stress. I'm stressed all the time still, so I don't know how much good it did me. Lynn Reed Banks, The Indian in the Cupboard. There's also obviously the movie of this. I kind of grew up with both of these. I actually don't remember it too well now, but back when I was a kid, I used to reread this over and over again. It's just a classic children's story. Clive Barker, The Hellbound Heart. I believe this is what Hellraiser was turned into. Fun fact, the other day, me and my girlfriend watched Hellboy because I got it confused with Hellraiser. It was fine. I don't, I don't really do superhero movies, but it was fine. Uh, the Hellbound Heart, yeah. I mean, it's quite short. I actually got this for free. I, I lifted it out of a skip and took it home with me and read it. And then we have The Erection by Jack Barrett, which is another one that I was sent. <laughs> and this is really odd. Uh, let me read you the... In fact, I'll just tell you my rem rem remembrance of it. Basically, a man goes into a coma with a permanent erection at the same time. He ends up in hospital and the nurses start having sex with him while he's unconscious and one of them gets pregnant and stuff. And then I believe at the end of this book, he wakes up and then the next two books follow what happens then. Believe it or not, it actually wasn't awful. It was all right. <laughs> and then finally on this one, there was one hiding at the end. This is J.M. Barry, Peter Pan, a children's classic. And uh, yeah, does, does that need any introduction? I don't think it does. So yeah, that is Bookshelf 1, Shelf 1. I've tried not to dwell too much on any of these books so that you can get a, quite a quick cross-section. At some point, we're going to get to, say, Bukowski, and we're going to have, like, 20 Bukowski books in a row. So I don't know how I'm going to do that, because most of them start to blur together after a while. But yeah, so this was Bookcase 1, Shelf 1 of my Bookshelf tour. Please do hit subscribe if you've enjoyed it and you would like to see more in this little series. I will get to them as and when I can. And uh, yeah, hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments which of these books you would most like to own yourself. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.